What can one man do to help his country at war? Classical composer Malik Jandali is being hailed as the Shostakovich of his native Syria. As he highlights the plight of his people suffering bombing, assassination, starvation and flight, his symphonies have become a rally call for peace. We hear of his greatest hope for the future of his country, the children of Syria, and Big Questions asks, how can music help a people in exile? All I have is my music, I compose, orchestrate my works, and my main source of inspiration are the Syrian children and their journey to freedom. Jandali was already well known in his native Syria as one of its leading cultural figures before the rising. But even then he was attracting the attention of the Assad regime because of the potential subversive threat of his works that celebrate the gifts to modern civilization by his Syrian ancestors. These are writing, the alphabet and music. In 2009, Jandali first performed his composition based on 3,000-year-old clay tablets found in the royal palace of Ugarit, now northwestern Syria. These cuneiform impressions found on the tablets are recognized as the oldest musical notation in the world and are the inspiration for his symphony, Echoes from Ugarit. I discovered through my online search that my ancestors actually invented the musical notes. Another shock, I said, oh my God, my people invented the musical notes? Unbelievable, how come nobody told me? How come the Minister of Culture didn't even celebrate that? It should be our national anthem. No, it was banned.
There is no parliament. There is no ministry of culture. Every classroom in Syria has a dictator's picture. Every classroom. Every um, um, theater. In February 2011, I was actually in Damascus. I had a concert planned at the Opera House in Cairo, in Alexandria. It was cancelled due to what's going on in Egypt. People were in Tahrir Square, so I decided to go visit my family. And I witnessed uh, the first peaceful revo you know, revolution and the peaceful demonstrations in the streets of Damascus. And I witnessed firsthand how the, what's called the security forces, capturing the students and the peaceful uh, journalists and uh, professors and uh, people uh, into uh, their buses to the prisons. I saw that firsthand. And then I flew back to the U.S. and I saw on the internet the horrific images of these children being tortured in Dara. And it happened that I had a concert planned already in New York and I performed in this concert only the melody of Watani Anna at the time because I didn't have lyrics. I'm not a songwriter. I'm just a musician, a composer. So at the end of the concert, uh, I performed the melody for the children of Syria. So I was witnessing firsthand the uh, torture of the children of my people and then it escalated into uh, snipers assassinating troops targeting children not journalists not adults they wanted to target the children so the mother can go crazy and then say look she doesn't deserve freedom she's screaming same thing with the father same thing with the uh, journalist I released it I was disinvited and it was rejected in July 2011, Jandali took his protest to Washington and he performed a public performance of his anthem to peace, Watani Anna, I Am My Homeland, in Lafayette Park, outside the White House. His actions did not go unnoticed in his homeland. And shortly afterwards, his parents, Dr. Mamoun Jandali and Linda Druby, were severely beaten up and their home was ransacked. The attackers warned them, we're going to teach you how to raise your son. 72 hours later, my parents were brutally attacked in Homs due to that performance because the dictator realized how powerful music is. You're not allowed to tell truth and beauty under dictatorship. I never realized that music is that powerful until that moment. When you see your mother beaten with no teeth, and your father, I mean, you say, oh my God, is this the result of my music? Did Mr. President made an executive decision based on my song to beat my mother? Come beat me. Don't beat my mother. But he wouldn't dare beating me because I'm an American citizen and because I have rights. So he will go against the non-citizen, the Syrian people who have no citizenship. They have no rights. So he can beat them, he can torture them, he can drop chemical weapons on them. And then he will say, oh, we are just uh, securing Syria. Uh, you know, I called my mother after the brutal attack and I was horrified by the pictures I received. And I couldn't believe my eyes. I said, oh my God. And I told her, I have another fundraising next week. What should I do? She said, go ahead. Another concert, saving one child, is worth another beating. That's the spirit of the mothers, that's the spirit of humans. It doesn't have to be just Syrian people. I mean, the American people, the British people, every people. They all want to be living in dignity and freedom and, and, uh, and uh, in a just society. In the same year, a series of protests by ordinary people swept like wildfire across the Middle East in what became known as the Arab Spring. A Syrian postman, Ibrahim Kashush, composed a simple chant challenging the dictatorship of Bashar Assad and the ruling Ba'ath Party. His words, out, out, Bashar, out, 
were taken up by hundreds of thousands on the streets of his native Hama, earning him the nickname Nightingale of the Syrian Revolution. On the 4th of July, 2011, his bullet-riddled body was found in the Orontes River, the neck slit and his vocal cords ripped out. People gathered, I believe it was 400,000 plus people, in the same city where I witnessed the massacre in 1982 and I saw the waterways being uh, destroyed. It took one firefighter to mobilize the people and he was saying, go away dictatorship. And 400,000 Syrians were chanting in response to him. It was the largest Syrian symphony in our history. One conductor, not appointed by the Ministry of Culture, and everybody is singing in harmony for freedom. Oh my God, I mean, how can you not be inspired by this scene? Even the US ambassador at the time, he joined the people, he broke protocol and went to Hama. I said, oh my God. But the story of the dictatorship capturing what they thought to be Kashush, cutting his throat, and giving us all a, an Assad lesson. Don't dare to sing for freedom. And don't ever dare to form a Syrian symphony. We cut your throat and we take your vocal cords out because we are Syria. I saw that image and I said, oh my God, what, I, what am I going to do? I kept the lyrics with the people. I took the melody that he used and transformed it into a symphony called the Freedom Kashush Symphony for his name. And that was in my album Emessa, which is the ancient Roman name of Homs. This is when I decided to go and visit the people in Syria, visit the children in the refugee camps. Uh, I saw the hope, the perseverance, the, uh, the love, the pure human spirit in the children. It's not yet polluted by dictatorship. They are not memorizing the speeches of dictatorship like I used to uh, memorize. So they're pure. I know, I know it's an ugly and difficult reality in the refugee camps and diseases, and, but they're free. And our duty as humans is to embrace these children so we can have bright futures. We can have inventors like we used to have and we still have. Uh, so we can have musicians, so we can have peacemakers because their message is peace. And once more, those are children, nothing else. The truth of the matter is he is destroying the beauty of Syria and eradicating my cultural identity, the Silk Road, the beauty, the diversity, and the human spirit of Syria. But I'm hopeful because the Syrian children are full of hope and they are sacrificing their lives to go and search for freedom, even in the oceans, even in the Mediterranean Sea. And they are excelling in Europe, and they are uh, progressing. The four movement Sinfonietta is based on the chants of the children and their melodies. It is the reflection of, of their journey to freedom. It is four movements orchestrated for a chamber orchestra. What I try to do in that Sinfonietta, the luminosity, is to preserve the beautiful melodies of Syria, Aleppo, the Silk Road, Damascus, Homs, the children, in a symphonic form to eternalize their music and to present it to the universe without any agendas, without any lyrics, as a symphonita for luminosity.
it is the uh, it is their symphony for peace. It is their symphony for for hope. I'm so lucky that I have this opportunity to be their voice. So it's amazing that he's still doing that for the children of Syria, and he still didn't give up yet uh, after five years. Uh, so I was emotional at the beginning. I, was, I you know, I had some tears. Five years and still we're still trying to, you know, like uh, do something for the Syrian children. Music always touched people hard, so I think uh, people are moved by music. So maybe you hope that they will, after you know, listening to this music, they will search and see what's going on. Malik Jandali eventually managed to bring his father and his mother to safety and they joined him in New York at the Carnegie Hall. It was a family reunion for the voice of the free Syrian children. I had the world premiere of my luminosity with the Zagreb Philharmonic Orchestra. I invited the orchestra to Carnegie Hall to join me in their debut. And I am honored to be part of it as an artist and to attempt and utilize all my knowledge, all, my, all I have is music utilize all that to present their message of peace. That's what we're doing. Just presenting their symphony of peace because the literal meaning of symphony in Latin is to sing together. Symphonia, singing together in harmony and constantly attempting to preserve what's being eradicated. As we speak, churches, where you can hear the Lord's Prayer in Aramaic are being destroyed as we speak. This is, a, this is Jesus' language. This is an altar where Jesus Christ himself touched. My ancestors happened to be the inventors of music notation. We wouldn't have had the privilege of listening to Beethoven's Ninth Symphony or Shostakovich's Leningrad Symphony or even the tunes of Duke Ellington, uh, 
So they invented the musical notation, the system, not to the Mesopotamian people, but to humanity. And even today we have inventors, you know, Steve Jobs, uh, my cousin, his father is from Syria. He invented the iPhone, the iMac, uh, Apple, big star. Um, and the question, how many inventors are we losing today? How many children could have been uh, people who adapted the typewriter or invented the computer or uh, invented the alphabet? This is a crime against humanity, not against the Syrian people. From that perspective, humanity should unite together to stop that crime. Church, Jewish temples in Aleppo, mosque, not counting the human life. The thousands of people, journalists, fathers, mothers, they are not migrants, they are not numbers, they are not victims, they are not um, uh, just numbers. Let's humanize the, 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 the catastrophe, the genocide. Those are people. I believe the most powerful thing in nature is water. The universe, the oceans, the, um, the rivers, the Nile River. We wouldn't have the, had the pyramids without the Nile River. Uh, the peace treaty was crafted and uh, documented on the banks of the Asi River in Homs. So it always takes, a, takes life to change and preserve life. And music uh, is the water of life. The Syrian children will rise again like the phoenix to tell the world that they invented the alphabet, the musical notes, the first ever peace treaty documented in the world, and that Syria was the land of all religions, embracing everyone, embracing the Armenians when they were being massacred, embracing the Jewish people when they were being burned, embracing the Christians and the message of Jesus in their churches and the Aramaic language. The only villages and people who speak this, the language of Jesus Christ are in Syria. And that's a proof that the Syrian people embraced that message. Otherwise, you couldn't have had the option to hear the Aramaic language if the Syrian people rejected it. The Syrian people embraced it and made it their own language. But the dictatorship is against Jesus Christ and against the Jewish people and it's against the Muslim people, it's against the children, against the music, against the alphabet, against the music, against everything. That is beautiful and true. So the Phoenix in exile is inspired by the children who are the Phoenix, who are going to rise again like the Phoenix. Uh, to tell the world that we are people for peace in a symphony of humanity. Thank you.